Hey everyone, welcome to chapter 7, dealing with inverses, radical functions, and relations. Today we're going to do day 0, 7, 1, operations on functions. So our goal today will be to find the sum, difference, product, and quotient of functions. So let's go right into some uh, notation and definitions, and most of which what we are dealing with is nothing too new today. So we are going to be adding functions together, subtracting functions, multiplying functions, and dividing functions. So we're going to le learn a little bit of uh, new notation today. All right. So with addition, uh, in the past, we have used the notation f of x plus g of x. But now what we're going to use is the quantity f plus g of x. It's just new notation. It means the same thing. We're adding f plus g together. Subtraction is very similar. We've got f of x minus g of x. But now we're going to use the notation f minus g of x. Okay, order is important here, all right? So keep that in mind as we go through our examples. For multiplication, we would have f of x times g of x, but now we will write it as f times g of x, all right? And then finally with division, before we had f of x, divided by g of x, but now our notation is f divided by g of x. All right, so we just have to familiarize ourselves with these new notations for our operations, okay? So let's go ahead down uh, below and try out a few examples, whoops. All right, here we go. All right, so our first examples, let's take a look at our two functions. Given f of x equals x squared minus 4 and g of x equals 2x plus 1, we're going to find each of the following. So the first one is f plus g of x. So, just to keep in mind, whenever we're plugging things in, let's use parentheses. So we've got function f plus function g. So let's go ahead and plug these in. So x squared minus 4 plus 2x plus 1. And now all we have to do is gather our like terms. So as we go through the process, we have an x squared. And there's no other x squared term. So x squared, all right? The only other like terms we have are going to be the constants, negative 4 and 1. So our final answer, we've got x squared plus 2x minus 3. So the concept isn't anything new, it's just the notation. All right, let's move on and try example 2. Now it's f minus g of x. Again, order is really important. So f was listed first, so f goes first again, but now we are subtracting. Okay, so we've got x squared minus 4, and then we've got minus the quantity 2x plus 1. So with subtraction, the reason we want to use parentheses is so that we, we remember to distribute this negative to both cases inside, all right? So when we're gathering our like terms, we've got x squared. There is no other x squared term, so we keep that x squared, all right? We've got a minus 2x this time. And then gathering our constants, we've got a negative 4 minus a positive 1. 
So that goes to negative 4 minus 1, which just goes to minus 5. So our final answer, x squared minus 2x minus 5. All right? Okay, next example is f times g of x. So multiplication, again, use parentheses. All right? So we have x squared minus 4, this times the quantity 2x plus 1. All right, now we just have to remember to FOIL. Okay, some of you guys like that box method, and that's perfectly fine. If you want to do that, let's go ahead. We've got an x squared, a minus 4. We've got a 2x and a 1. And if we go through, we've got 2x times x squared, 2x squared, 2x times our negative 4 is negative 8x, 1 times x squared, oh, I'm sorry, up ahead, that's a 2x cubed, right? Good catch. So then a 1 times x squared is x squared, and a 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. So we don't have any like terms here. We could go ahead and just write it in standard form. Remember, highest degree to lowest degree. So our final answer here, 2x cubed plus x squared minus 8x minus 4. All right? And finally, we've got division. So let's give ourselves a little bit more space here because there's a little bit more to talk about. So this time with division, all right, we can go ahead and write in our two quantities, our two polynomials or functions. So we've got f, which is x squared minus 4, divided by g, 2x plus 1. In this case, we would try and factor and cancel. We can only cancel factors, not terms. So my x's don't cancel, and that 4 and the 2, those don't cancel, all right? So those are terms. We can only cancel factors. So in this case, that's it. We're done with the division. However, with division, we do have to talk a little bit extra. Okay, think in mind what rules come with division. Okay, there's no dividing by zero. So this is an undefined function when the denominator equals zero. So in order to find our domain, the first thing we're going to do is set the denominator equal to zero. All right, by doing this, this will allow us to solve for the value of x that makes the denominator zero. So setting our denominator equal to zero, 2x plus one equals zero, we solve this, we get x to be negative one-half, all right? But this is the value of x that makes the denominator zero. So x cannot be negative one-half. It can be any other number but negative one-half. So the way we state our domain is it's all real numbers except x cannot equal negative one-half. Okay? All right, let's move on to the next page. Okay, so this next example, or these next four examples, really, are going to be you trying what we just talked about on your own. So, given f of x equals x squared minus 3x plus 2, and g of x equals 2x minus 4, I want you to add, subtract, multiply, and divide these two functions and state your final answer and with example number eight also provide the domain that one's a little trickier okay so pause the video try these on your own all right hopefully you had a chance to try these four examples I'm just gonna provide you with the answers and if you have any questions make sure you bring those to the table tomorrow for your teacher so uh, example five you should get an answer of x squared minus x minus 2. 
For example 6, you will get negative x squared plus 5x minus 6. For example 7, you will get 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus 16x minus 8. And then finally, for example 8, you get 2x minus 4 over x cubed, or sorry, x squared minus 3x plus 2. Your domain is going to be all real numbers. However, there are two values of x that it cannot equal, and that is when x equals 1, so x cannot equal 1, and x cannot equal 2. If it equals either one of those, the denominator is 0, and we cannot have that. Okay? So make sure if you have any questions on how we got these uh, answers here in these last few examples, make sure to talk to your teacher tomorrow. Okay? Have a nice night. Bye.